Of all the prehistoric periods we know about, there's one stretch of time that should have been absolutely teeming with life, yet it's almost completely empty. We're talking about a 15 million year hole in the fossil record that's so bizarre. It has its own name, Romer's Gap. And honestly, the story of how scientists figured out what was going on is pretty wild. So here's the thing about paleontology. You're basically a detective except your crime scene is 350 million years old, and the evidence might be buried under a Scottish river, which, as it turns out, is exactly where part of this mystery got solved. Picture this. You're flipping through Earth's photo album, and everything's going great. You've got these amazing shots of early fish with legs splashing around in ancient swamps about 360 million years ago. They're weird-looking things with eight toes and limbs that can't really support them on land. But they're clearly the ancestors of everything with a backbone that walks around today. Then you turn the page to see what happens next, and nothing. Blank pages for 15 million years. Then suddenly, BAM! You've got fully terrestrial animals with five toes, proper walking limbs, and basically the body plan that every land vertebrate since has been working off of. That's Romer's Gap. Named after Alfred Romer, a Harvard paleontologist who first noticed this ridiculous hole in the fossil record back in 1956. The guy was just trying to understand how fish evolved into land animals, and instead, he discovered that evolution apparently took a 15 million year coffee break. Now, 15 million years might not sound like much when you're talking about deep time, but consider this. That's longer than it took for humans to evolve from early primates. It's enough time for an entire planet's worth of ecosystems to completely transform. And we had almost nothing to show for it. For decades, scientists figured they just hadn't found the right rocks yet. Maybe the fossils were buried somewhere inaccessible. Or maybe the geological conditions during that time period were just terrible for preservation. Some researchers even suggested that maybe there really wasn't much life on land during that time that low oxygen levels had basically put evolution on pause. Enter Stan Wood, a Scottish fossil hunter who was absolutely not having any of this nonsense. Stan was one of those larger-than-life characters that paleontology seems to attract. Born in Edinburgh in 1939, he left school at 14 to work in the shipyards, served in the merchant navy, and eventually became an insurance salesman. But somewhere along the way, he got completely obsessed with hunting fossils. And honestly, when I say obsessed, I mean the guy would literally divert rivers to get at fossil-bearing rocks. In the late 2000s, Stan was poking around the Scottish borders with his colleague Tim Smithson from Cambridge. They had this hunch that if there were any fossils from Romer's Gap anywhere, they'd be in Scotland, because that's where the right kinds of rocks from that time period were exposed. Plus, 360 million years ago, Scotland wasn't the cold, damp place we know today. It was sitting practically on the equator, all hot and humid and swampy, perfect for early land animals. And then Stan found Willie's Hole. Willie's Hole is this unassuming spot near the village of Chernside in the Scottish borders, where a small river called the White Adder Water had cut down through layers of ancient rock. But what Stan found there in 2008 was absolutely bonkers. We're talking about remarkably complete fossils of early tetrapods, animals with four limbs, mixed in with fossils of plants, millipedes, scorpions, and fish, all dating from smack dab in the middle of Romer's Gap. One of the most spectacular finds was a creature they nicknamed Ribbo because of its prominent ribs. This thing was about the size of a large dog, and it was clearly designed for life on land. It had the five-toed foot pattern that became the standard for all land vertebrates afterward, and its limb bones were built to actually support the animal's weight out of water. But here's the really wild part. To properly excavate Willie's hole, they had to divert the entire river. Picture a team of paleontologists in 2015, literally rerouting a Scottish river so they could dig fossils out of the bedrock underneath. It's like something out of an adventure movie, except with more mud and grant paperwork. As word got out about Stan's discoveries, other teams started finding Romer's Gap fossils in Scotland too. Sites at Burnmouth, along the River Tweed near Coldstream, even near Tantalon Castle. All of a sudden, this supposed dead zone in the fossil record was bursting with life. 
By 2016, researchers had identified five new species of early tetrapods from Scottish sites, with several more still being studied. These weren't just random scraps either. We're talking about skulls, limb bones, vertebrae, enough material to really understand what these animals looked like and how they lived, and what they found completely changed the story. These animals weren't primitive fish with legs struggling to make it on land. They were sophisticated early land animals, some fully terrestrial, others splitting their time between water and land. They had developed efficient breathing systems, proper walking gaits, and the basic body plans that would dominate terrestrial life for the next 300 plus million years. Now, you might be wondering, if all these animals were actually living during Romer's Gap, why was it called a gap in the first place? Where were all the fossils? Well, it turns out the answer might be literally in the air. Or rather, what wasn't in the air. Recent geochemical studies of rocks from this time period have revealed something pretty startling. Atmospheric oxygen levels during Romer's Gap were unusually low. We're talking about maybe 13 to 15 percent oxygen in the atmosphere compared to the 21 percent we have today. That might not sound like a huge difference, but when you're an early land animal trying to breathe air instead of filtering oxygen from water, every percentage point matters. Lower oxygen levels would have meant that only certain types of environments could support terrestrial life. Areas near the coast, river deltas, places with good water circulation, and maybe some elevation. Most of the planet's land surface would have been pretty hostile to air-breathing animals. But here's the thing that makes this really interesting. Scotland, 350 million years ago, was exactly the kind of place where terrestrial life could have thrived. It was a coastal lowland with lots of rivers and deltas sitting in the tropical zone with high humidity. Perfect conditions for animals making the transition from water to land. And speaking of massive holes in the geological record, Romer's Gap isn't even the biggest one we know about. There's something called the Great Unconformity that makes a 15 million year gap look like a coffee break. First noticed by John Wesley Powell in the Grand Canyon in 1869, the Great Unconformity represents more than a billion years of missing rock in certain places. One day you're looking at rocks from about 3 billion years ago, and the next layer up is only 550 million years old. That's not a gap. That's more like someone ripped out two-thirds of the book. Recent research suggests this wasn't one massive erosion event, but probably a series of them tied to the formation and breakup of ancient supercontinents. When continents collide and split apart, they create mountain ranges that get worn down over hundreds of millions of years, scraping away layer after layer of rock and the fossil record contained within. It's actually kind of humbling when you think about it. We like to imagine that the fossil record gives us this complete picture of life's history, but the reality is that we're working with maybe less than 1% of all the species that ever lived. Most of the story is missing, and sometimes we don't even know what questions we should be asking about the empty spaces. The discovery of life during Romer's Gap has fundamentally changed how we think about the evolution of terrestrial life. It turns out that the transition from water to land wasn't this slow, gradual process that took tens of millions of years. These animals figured out how to walk, breathe air, and live on land relatively quickly and then spent the supposedly empty 15 million years diversifying and adapting to different terrestrial environments. This also means that a lot of major evolutionary innovations, things like the five-toed limb pattern, efficient lung systems, and specialized land animal body plans are much older than we thought. The animals that emerged after Romer's Gap weren't evolutionary experiments, they were the successful descendants of a long line of terrestrial pioneers. And it raises this fascinating question about what else might be hiding in the fossil record. How many other gaps are actually just periods where the conditions for fossilization were poor, or where we haven't found the right rocks yet? Stan Wood's discoveries in Scotland prove that sometimes the most important fossils are sitting right under our noses, or in this case, under Scottish rivers. There's something pretty amazing about Stan Wood's story that goes beyond just the scientific discoveries. Here was a guy with no formal training in paleontology who became one of the most important fossil hunters of the 20th century. He discovered 29 new species over his career, revolutionized our understanding of early land life, 
and inspired a whole generation of paleontologists. Stan died in 2012, just a few years after his discoveries at Willie's Hole started making headlines. But his work continues to pay dividends. Scientists are still studying fossils he collected, still making new discoveries from his sites. The Paleontological Association even created the Stan Wood Award in his honor in 2022. It's a good reminder that science isn't just about fancy equipment and university laboratories. Sometimes the biggest breakthroughs come from someone with sharp eyes, endless curiosity, and the willingness to spend years crawling around in the mud looking for rocks that everyone else walked past. When you step back and look at the whole story of Romer's Gap, it's really a story about the limitations of the fossil record and the ingenuity of the people who study it. For 60 years, one of the most important transitions in evolutionary history appeared to be a complete mystery. And then a dedicated fossil hunter and his colleagues proved that the mystery was really just a matter of looking in the right places. But it also highlights how much we still don't know. Even with all of Stan Wood's discoveries, we're still working with a tiny fraction of the life that existed during this crucial period. Each new fossil changes our understanding, sometimes in fundamental ways. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about paleontology. Every time you think you've got the story figured out, someone finds a fossil that makes you reconsider everything. Romer's Gap went from being evidence that early land life was sparse and struggling to being proof that terrestrial ecosystems were already diverse and sophisticated 350 million years ago. So the next time you hear about some supposedly impossible gap in the fossil record, remember Stan Wood and Willie's Hole. Sometimes the answer isn't that nothing was happening. Sometimes it's just that we haven't looked in the right river yet. The fossil record is full of holes, but those holes don't necessarily mean that life took a break. More often than not, they're just reminders that we're still learning how to read the story that's written in the rocks. And every now and then, if we're lucky and persistent enough, we get to fill in one of those blank pages and discover that the story was even more amazing than we imagined. Thanks for watching, and see you soon on Before Fire.